Hey guys, it's LOL Raibun, and today I'm going to be going over the Pyramids of Prophecy DLC, uh, stuff you should know, and things like that. I'm just setting up my statues. I'm planning to run this on NG0, um, just to show you all of the content and get a run done on my Ranger. I may do, I may do a higher NG, actually. Um, so let me do my statues really quick. Uh, this is what we'll run here. And uh, I'll go set up, and then we'll get right into it. All right, so we'll be running NG8, uh, mainly because I'm not super confident on my Ranger, uh, but that's kind of irrelevant to this video. Uh, I'll be showing you all this stuff that's unique to the uh, Parents of Prophecy DLC, and cover all that stuff, so hopefully when you guys play it, you have a better time getting around and all that stuff. Uh, one thing I would definitely recommend is taking, um, sorry, my brain is not working, uh, Glasswalks. Glasswalks is really nice in the Appearance of Prophecy DLC, strictly because um, in the waiting map in between acts, which I think you only experience between the second act and the third act, and then the third, I, I, I'm a little bit, I'll, I'll show you the map when we get to it. Um, because, uh, yet again, I'm no master of Heroes of Appearance of Prophecy, but I can tell you what I have learned and what's important in terms of progressing through it. Um, so I'll be doing this in little segments, uh, but yeah, we'll get right into it. If you're curious as to what I'm running, uh, these are the items I've got. I'm doing my usual stuff otherwise. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So let's get right into it. Um, first thing I should note, oh, perfect, actually, um, is this is one of the ways of getting items in the Appearance of Prophecy uh, maps. This actually lasts throughout every single act. There's a sarcophagus. I don't know if it's necessarily every floor. I don't believe it is. Uh, but how this works is you pick items and you gain curse. Um, curse is one of these things that gets exponentially worse. Uh, you don't want to get a lot of curse. If I wanted all of these items, I would gain 22 curses, which means I have a 19% chance to miss on every single attack. I have a 19% chance to take 310% critical damage from all sources, which means... I'm likely to take a bunch of extra damage. So what you do here is you kind of try to assume how many curse uh, fixes, curse drinks, curse, I don't know what they would be called. Uh, there's little flasks that reduce your curse. Here's one of them actually, right here, um, by one. Um, and on these first few maps, I, I'd say there's usually around five, anywhere from five to maybe 10 absolute max, but I'd say you should not count on there being 10, and there may be less than five sometimes. Um, so what I like to do is just look at items with high prio. I don't care too much about glowing staff, but it does give me one magical damage on my primary. Enchanted Dirk is great. Uh, white items in general don't give you too much, and what you'll notice is if you combo two white items, it's it goes up quite a bit, but if you combo three, it goes up the same amount, I believe. So the first white item is one, but everyone thereafter is worth uh, three, and green items are worth four, and after that, what ends up happening is these count as three, three, this one's no longer three, I don't know the exact formula, but if you take more rare items, you're bound to get more and more curses with how many you take. So for me, I'll probably take these. This is four curse. It's not too bad. I kind of want to take glowing staff here. Um, so I'm going to do it. It's kind of risky, seven curse. Uh, but we'll see if we get rid of it. Um, your number of curses is actually listed uh, down here um, as one of your things. And as you'll see, if we go over here and pick up this curse thing, now we're at six. The next important thing to know about Pyramids of Prophecy is gold is either on the floor or you'll encounter these little beetles 
Uh, let me find some for you. It should be pretty easy to find them. And when you kill the beetles, they drop gold. Otherwise, uh, there's no barrels or anything to smash. There's some right here. These guys. These guys drop gold when you kill them. And that's how you get gold in Pyramids of Prophecy. And the last thing I want to know, I'll have to show you when I find it. Uh, but it's kind of important too. Uh, there's two more things that are important. Or three that are important that I'll show you. So I'll get back to you when I see one of those things. Alright, so the next thing is... When you encounter shops on the first act, there is this thing called a map piece. Um, this tells you the safest route to the pyramid. Um, this is kind of important, but no matter what, you will end up at the pyramid. There's always going to be three floors. Um, and what this does is, essentially, if you follow the map piece, you will not get a great threat. Um, otherwise, you will. Um, the great threat consists of tornadoes that I, I believe they just slow you. Uh, like little, uh, what are they called? Sandstorm tornado type deals. And you also get spawns of the, uh, the little sand guys that throw little sand rocks at you. Um, so it's nothing that's going to ruin your run. Uh, but I would advise if you can't afford it and still get an item. Because you can only pick out one item from the shop. Um, you should You should purchase it. So I'm going to go ahead and purchase it. I don't care too much about this. Uh, I like this. I don't know which one I would take here. Um, but I think I'm going to take Steady Greaves. So. Just to be safe. Uh, but these are the sand guys I'm talking about right here. These guys will spawn and, and come at you when there's a great threat. Uh, not that they don't spawn already. But they spawn from these little uh, dunes in the sand. Um, that being said. Once you get your map piece. You'll see something like this up in the top. Uh, you'll either have an X on the left, the right, or at the top, like we have. And what that signifies is there's actually three exits on this map. Um, mine is somewhere over here for the left. Somewhere over, and here's the right exit, and the top exit's going to be right up here. Um, once you have uh, purchased your map piece, you just head on over to that exit and... Go and grab your free of Great Threats map. So, as you'll see. And I'll show you what happens if we don't follow the map piece. Um, one thing to note, though, is even if you don't purchase it, it's still a 1 in 3 chance. It's not like you guaranteed will not get it. Um, there's actually a fairly high chance that you will still end up in a decent map. Um, but a higher chance that you will end up in a map with great threats. So here's two more curse repellent. You'll notice on that first floor we only got one. Um, so definitely something to think about when picking what items to get. Here's our left exit. Uh, I found the other thing, but I accidentally hit it with my uh, spray of arrows. Uh, how you get chests in this map Actually, I did it twice, apparently. Um, is you won't find little rooms for them, but they will be buried under the sand. And if you attack the sand that buries them, they do come out of the ground. Uh, I'll see if I can still find an instance of a buried one. Uh, but these two chests, as you can see, are not really in rooms. They're just kind of on the map, and they were buried underneath the sand. Uh, I'll try and find that, but that was the other thing I was going to mention. And I'm still looking for the last thing. So, as you can see in the top, uh, we've got our entrance on the right. So, we'll go ahead and take the one at the top, uh, just so you can see what happens if you do not follow the path on the map piece. As I said, it's not the end of the world. Um, here you go, Great Threat Respond. And as you'll notice, or as you'll notice soon, these little sandstorm guys will come around, in which you're slow. You have bad vision, and the sand guys spawn out of these. So here's one spawning right now. And that's pretty much what the great threat is. It's nothing too, too detrimental, but it's definitely something to worry about and note. The uh, sand guys don't do anything special for you. Uh, so it's pretty much just a negative, but it's not a super bad one. Right, I found one. I found one of the buried chests. Um, you'll see it right there. I try not to uh, ruin it. But yeah, as you can see, it's underneath. If I shoot it, or if I use this, any spells that hit it, it'll uncover it. 
And there you go. Free item. Um, so that's where you're going to get your items that do not have curses attached to them. Um, so it's kind of important to nab those uh, whenever you can. Ah, here's something else that we should note. Because it's important. Um, in your Pyramids of Prophecy runs, you can find statue blueprints like this one. Um, the thing is... Uh, I don't know if I'm going to explain this perfectly, but what happens is you're not guaranteed to find one on every single floor. And if you do find them, what happens is it looks at your NG, the, the, the level of NG you're running. Or at least this is how I understand it. Um, if you understand it differently, or if you know that I'm wrong about this, um, or something like that, uh, please leave a comment down below. Uh, but what happens is it looks at your NG, um, and it spawns one of these in. If the, like, uh, let's say you need Callus level 16, but you're running an NG, uh, I don't know, 10 run. The chance of you getting a Callus out of the selected amount of uh, blueprints is low. Like, low, low. So whenever a blueprint spawns, it has a chance to spawn, or whenever a blueprint is going to spawn... Every single thing has a, uh, when it when it's selected. So if it says, okay, I'm spawning a callus blueprint. Um, I believe the chance of that callus blueprint actually spawning in is determined by your NG level and the level of the blueprint. So if your NG level that you're running the run on is incredibly low compared to the level of the statue, what will end up actually happening is your um, blueprint probably will not spawn in. There is a very, very minute chance it will. I don't know at what point this happens. You can probably find information on it on the Wikipedia. And on that note, I'll go do that for you so I can tell you now. So for whatever reason, my internet is being a bit wonky. Um, so I can see the page on Google. However, the page itself will not load. Uh, so I'll give you what I get off of the Google search from the page, which is that you can find blueprints of any level on any level of NG. Oh, the page just loaded. Nice. Um, you find page, uh, sorry, blueprint levels of any kind on any NG level. However, um, finding blueprints higher than three levels above your NG. So if I was running NG8, which I am, um, finding anything at 11 or above is incredibly low chance. Um, so for example, if you already have blueprint level 11 of Callus here, I'm very unlikely to find the next level. The other thing to note about blueprints is you have to find them in sequential order. If you have Callus level one, you can't just suddenly stumble upon Callus level three. You have to find Callus level two first, and then you'll get Callus level three. Um, so one of the strategies for getting tons of blueprints is just rushing through high NGs, don't take any items, don't spend any money, and just try to loot the blueprints before you die. Um, you obviously won't be able to clear the first boss if you're not taking uh, items on a high NG, and so you usually just run Act 1. Um, there is no cap for statue levels, and I, I think that's all there is to statues. Um, yeah, I think that's all there is. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and loot this. As you can see, I have level 12, I think, on some statues. And yet, I just got a level 5. Um, so, it's all up to your RNG, which ones you find high levels of, and which, one, which ones you have to search for for a very long time. And we actually stumbled into the last thing that I wanted to talk about. So, let's talk about it. This is, oh geez, what's it called? The Celestial sig Sigil, I think. Um, how this works is it's a puzzle, but it's two parts. Uh, you spot the Celestial Sigil on this act, on the first act of Pyramids of Prophecy, and later on, you'll discover the counterpart where you have to recreate the sigil. Um, this thing's kind of getting in the way, but if you look at it carefully, you'll notice there's little dots here. Five on the top, 
two below these two, one here, one here, and one in the center. So what this is, it's a five by five grid, and you have to replicate it. So mine would be a full row on the top, um, a half row, so or half column, so to speak, on this one, three, uh, considering the top, the top, middle, and the middle points, and then it comes in uh, diagonally to the bottom center. Um, I'll try to remember that. Um, if I can't, I can just resort to looking back at my video when we encounter the second part. But that is the other thing you want to be looking out for when you run uh, Pyramids of Prophecy. And commit it to your brain. If that's too hard for you, you can take a picture of it or something like that uh, to remember it later. Um, one thing I will note is I used to not really pay attention for those. And if I did see them, I didn't think anything of them. Um, so I've actually since then since i realized what they were i've played uh, probably two or three successful appearance of prophecy runs and mine almost always spawn on a floor three but from my understanding that is not the case as a rule um they can spawn anywhere from floor one to three so you have to check and full clear if you will every single floor to look for them um i think that's it for act one um, we'll go ahead and cover the bosses in this video too, all the things about them in a general sense. And if I do have to, if you want, guys want a more specific bosses video on them later on, I'll do that too. Uh, so we'll grab the map piece again here and sandals of swiftness because I want the evade set. I love the evade set on Ranger. Um, and we'll keep checking around for chests. One thing I will say is I like running the Ranger on uh, Pyramids of Prophecy strictly because uh, right clicking uh, sprays arrows everywhere so if I don't notice a chest underneath, underneath the sand uh, I have a pretty high chance of getting it anyways because I'm just spraying attacks in every which direction uh, but yeah I'll see you guys uh, when we go to the boss room we are going to take the top exit um, because we do not want to deal with the sandstorms and the spawns on the boss which by the way this is exactly what happens in the boss room if you do not go through the the map piece exit so if you're not going to buy map pieces except for once i would recommend doing it um before the boss rather than before any of these stages um because here it's just kind of a nuisance rather than an actual problem but in the boss getting slowed could definitely uh ruin your run So here we are at the boss, and he is a sandworm. Uh, so when he's underground, you can't attack him. But when he comes up, he'll do like a little circle around you. If you hit the head, you're going to do extra damage, whereas if you hit these spiky pieces, you'll do less damage. So as you see, my damage goes way up when I'm actually hitting the head. Um, this is the other thing he does. He'll do this little attack where he comes up and just fires crap at you. Um, not very threatening um, the big thing is you don't want to get stuck in front of his mouth when he's doing this because it can end up screwing you over and last but not least these segments kind of go away in a line so no matter what eventually they'll clear it's kind of like the snake game um, you can blow this guy up I don't know if he drops items all the time or not uh, but the exit to the next floor looks like this, so this is what you're going to be looking for when you beat him. Ah, here it is. The lobby room I was talking about. Um, glass walks here, as you can see, right here. Uh, you can't get this currently, but the next time you visit the lobby, you can um, get this free gold chest if you take glass walks. There's some other notable things that you get to do. Um, I'll show you those too. Over here, you always get some items, and I didn't know you could get ore, but yet again, I don't run this a lot, so uh, that's not necessarily a thing that's uncommon. Um, if you walk over here, you can use your glass walks to get these curse removals ahead of time, which is very nice, because you're less likely to kill yourself because of it. Um, I don't think you can get these otherwise, and there's also potion recharges for you. Um, you also get this free silver chest, 
And I think that's it for the first section. But as you can see, there's glass walks all over the place here. Um, so if you take them, they give you quite an advantage compared to if you do not take them. Um, this is the second section of the lobby. Um, I can't really show you it now, but you basically start over here, which gives you access to that and the glass walk over here and stuff like that. So, yeah, we'll go into Act 2 of Pyramids of Prophecy now. Um, one thing to know about this is ooh, statue. <laughs> Um, there are traps in Pyramids of Prophecy, and if I'm being quite honest with you, I find them a lot more difficult than the traps of the base game. Um, so I would stay away from them if you're having a really good run and you're new to this. Um, obviously, if you're a seasoned Pyramids of Prophecy player, they're probably a joke to you. Uh, but I think they have a lot higher of a learning curve than the uh, Heroes of Hammerwatch base game traps. The other thing to note is that the mini boss on this floor is a mummy and he fires out um, projectiles that give you curse stacks. Um, you really don't want to get hit by those because once you get stacked with a ton of curse stacks, you will end up having an awful time. Um, for this reason, if you wanted to, here he is, I'll show you what that looks like that you do not want to get hit by that it is homing um but it eventually does disappear the other thing he'll do which you just saw him do is he'll place these little curse circles which arm and rearm forever um if you step on those and they explode while you're in them you're gonna get a stack of curses um basically just avoid getting curses at all costs because it can throw a run completely I don't think I finished what I was saying earlier. Um, if you have a hard time dealing with the mummies and not getting curse stacks, um, you may want to turn off mini bosses for this act. Or for this act specifically, but for the run. Um, here's our first trap. Yet again, I have no clue what's happening. Um, as far as I know, these ones with these buttons, these are like switches. Um, so this is in mode one. And once we pick up the item, this switch will come on, I believe. Or no, 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 we hit the switch, which switches it to mode 2. Which makes it so we're not just eating fireballs. Um, so we could walk here, and then walk out. Um, there's a lot of traps like this. I am not familiar with all of them, so I will not claim to be a specialist on any of these. I did this one to show you. I was hoping I didn't die here. Uh, but these guys... I'm not sure if they instantly kill you or they just do a ton of damage, but if I remember correctly, these and the boulders are the two ones you want to work, uh, watch out for the most. Um, there's also these green leafy things that look kind of like... Uh, I mean, they look like leaves. Uh, but what they do is when you walk over them, you gain curse stacks. So I would avoid those at all costs. Um, curse stacks are awful. I mean, they, they are really, really not something you want. Um, so yeah, this this one right here, this is full of things I do not like. Um, we'll run it, and I'm going to try not to get hit by a boulder, but I definitely could lose here if I do get hit by a boulder. You have to hit these buttons. A lot of the traps are multi-parters like this. So you actually have to do something, come back, and then go back through again to get something like this and a lot of them are not worth it uh, in my opinion uh, but as you guys know items are very very helpful in clearing runs uh, one other thing this is not a secret this giant hole in the wall is not a secret there are however uh, walls that do have secrets in them I'll try to find one I only found out about this recently um, so I'm not sure if I'm the best at finding them, but I'll try to find one for you guys. And that's probably when I'll be back if I uh, have any more commentary for this act. Ah, here's the bat room. That's what the bat room looks like. Um, there's also cracks that you can break down. As you can see, I end up with a few uh, curse stacks. Two of those were from a mummy. Four of them were from a sarcophagus. So 
like I said previously, the mummy can definitely add a ton of curse stacks to your run and end up just destroying it for you. So be careful. Um, there's also things like this that look like, oh, maybe this isn't a trap room. But you hit a button and you realize, oh, this is a trap room. Yeah, if I get hit by one of these, it could definitely be the end of me. Um, yep, and now we've got boulders to deal with. Just for a scarab of protection. All of that. Um, boulders also do not just end at the trap. They will keep going till they hit a wall. Fun fact. Here it is. This is the star reproduction thing. So, as you can recall, once you've turned something on, by the way, you can't turn it off. So make sure you're turning on the right ones. Ours was a shield. And so once we do that, we get a free item. By the way, this is probably one of the best items to get at this point in the game. Um, uh, I don't know if you've watched my money-making guide, but Dwarven Pickaxe in Pyramids of Prophecy is actually insane. And I'll get to showcase that, which is actually really exciting. Um, these are the leaf things I was talking about, by the way. Um, by the way, they're not leaves. Uh, to me, they look like leaves, but I'm pretty sure they're actually skulls. Um, <laughs> so so there, there's that. That's a thing. Uh, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and clear this. We'll get to boss three, and then I'll show you how incredible uh, Dwarven Pickaxe is. Yeah, so this looks like a, you have to take some uh, some curses if you don't follow the right path in terms of when to go. I'm not sure if I'm down for that, but we'll do it anyways. Oh, we just gained a curse. We have to time this right. No, I don't think that now is the time. That's definitely not it either. Is it? Do you just have to take the curse or take the damage? Is that the option? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm actually not going to mess around with that one. I don't want to lose the run because I want to get the rest of the information out, especially the Dwarven Pickaxe. As you can see there, um, the uh, spider webs that lay on the ground that slow you down are actually uh, things that you can hit and destroy. Um, so if they're impeding your progress, go ahead and just destroy them. Um, I think our exit was down here on the left. But, yeah, I'll see you guys... Oh, on the right. So I'll see you guys at the boss. Or actually, I'll just stay here with you guys until we enter that little doorway. So the second one has three floors as well. Uh, you've got this Indiana Jones kind of snakes everywhere vibe here. Um, and how this box, boss works is you want to kill them as fast as possible. I cannot stress that enough. Uh, you know the mummies and the last floor. This is like the mummy of all mummies. Um, I have played through a fight of this boss where I took a while to kill it, and I ended up with, I think, like 37 stacks of curse, and I had zero when I started the fight. Um, so you walk up to the sarcophagus, and you hit F on it, and basically your goal is just keep your distance, and uh, don't get hit by curses and uh, live. Yeah. We actually end up with none there. Perfect. Um, so you got items on the left here, which the paths to them uh, open up once you've actually killed the boss. Um, yep. So now we'll go to the final floor. Or, actually, lobby. Sorry. So we'll talk about the lobby thing some more. Glasswalks. Um, as you can see, glasswalks bring you over here. Which equals free ore and money. Um, the other thing that glasswalks do... Is... Up here... You'll see there's a room where you have to take curses, basically. Because it comes back this way. Um... But with glass walks, 
you walk over here, you grab your free item from the gold chest, you walk back here, you take this little pathway, and what you're supposed to do, but I probably will not do, is you then wait for this, and you walk down with the non-curse active blocks. Um, but yeah, that's all there is to it. There's a fountain here, if you need it at this point. And I thought there was a way to go back over to the other side to grab the health potions, but I guess not. Um, and this guy is important. These little genies, um, they stay around, and they're actually the doorways to the next floors throughout the rest of Pyramids of Prophecy. We're about to enter the final act. Uh, what happens when you press on one of these? They remove curses, but they spawn a great threat, which is them. And they'll try to kill you. Um, but then they spawn this portal, too. And when you hit this portal, you enter this little genie dimension. And the genie dimension is great. Um, I used to think you couldn't kill these guys, but you most certainly can. I don't know if that's a new thing or an old thing. But in general, if you just live through this, so you don't have to hit them at all, you just have to live through this. Um, once it goes full, you'll notice I can't move, and then I'm in the next floor. So that's how that works. Um, now I really want to cover my Dwarven Pickaxe, how incredible it's going to be. So let me try to look for... Okay, these guys. Those guys at the wall up there are constructs, and when you kill them... Because of Dwarven Pickaxe, you're likely to get a lot of ore from them. Um, these little Boomerang Simtar guys are a pain in the butt. A little ore warning on that. But yeah, when you walk past these guys, they'll come to life. I have very bad luck, apparently. Uh, I'm not triggering it a whole ton, but you definitely get a ton of ore from those guys. Um, so the general uh, thought process on what you do on this floor... Um, is you can do a really lengthy clear, or you can do a fast clear. It's up to you what you feel like doing. You can take the first genie you see, pop it, immediately go through the portal. Or, you can go throughout the entire floor, uh, look for stuff. I know nothing about this trap room, and I'm not going to mess with it. Yeah, that looks awful. Alright. Um... I can definitely make a trap video on all these traps for you guys, but I have a lot of learning to do if I do that. Um, we got some more statues down here. I don't know how we make them activate. Um, I thought it was just if you got near them, they activated. Ooh, I got stuck. That could have been bad. I guess some of them actually are statues, and some of them aren't. Uh, but yeah, they definitely can give a lot of ore. I mean, a lot of ore. Uh, we'll try to full clear this room and then activate them. So we can see just them dying. Alright. Ore from that one. Ow. Getting really bad luck with this. I'm not sure how to... There we go. Or, or, um, it's just nice. It's just nice getting all the ore. Okay, sorry. I, I'm going on way too much about this. Um, I'll see you when... Oh, no, no. We'll, we'll cover one of these genies. As you'll notice, they work exactly the same. We hit it. We remove curses. So if we don't have any curses, it doesn't do anything. We, we can't get negative curses. Uh, but one of the strategies for this floor is to go around, find the sarcophagus if it's there. Uh, take all the curses you're going to take, and then come to these guys. Hit each and every one of them to remove all the curses you can, and then leave the floor. But for now, I'll just hit it. And as you'll note, it's a portal on the map now. So, yet again, I'm going to clear the rest of this, and then I'll get back to you guys if anything notable happens. So this sarcophagus room in particular, I believe once you take something from it, uh, these guys come to life. Uh, not super... Not something you really need to worry about, but I figured I'd note it just in case. I'm not taking 28 curses for that. There we go. 
Look at this sweet deal we can get. Plus 100 curses for a 63% chance to miss on all attacks. <laughs> oh, jeez. What's, what's the max we can end up with here? 200 and... <laughs> this sounds like a good offer. Uh, yeah, we're only going to take Judgment here for 16. It's not that bad. So, we've finally made it to the last boss of Pyramids of Prophecy. I don't know if you have to hit F on this one. I think you do. Uh, he's a genie. You rub him out of his lamp and he comes out and tries to kill you. What a nice guy. Um, I'll try to remember the particular things about this guy when you fight him. Um, but he just fires attacks at you. And right here, um, he has a healing thing that he does. Which I believe is this. Every time he gets hit by those little fiery things, he heals. Uh, but unfortunately for him, we're doing way more damage than he can heal for. There he is. That's the boss. Um, I don't think there's too much to him. He's kind of unique because he has healing, unlike any other boss in Here's a Hammer Watch. Um, and it can get out of hand if you're not doing enough damage. Um, but I think it only happens twice per fight at the one-third, or the, sorry, two-thirds and one-third uh, HP marks. I could be wrong on that. Again, I don't have too, too much information uh, from previous runs on this. But, yeah. I think that's all there is to uh, Periods of Prophecy that's notable. Um, and we should check my ore gain. I don't think it was actually that much. Um, is it venturing? No, it's... it's. Uh... Well, maybe it is adventuring. Okay, sorry. Uh, or found 420 so uh a decent amount decent amount uh considering i wasn't doing an or run um but yeah i hope you guys found this useful for your heroes of hammer watch uh pyramids of prophecy runs um there's not too too much to it that's super unique uh but the one thing i would advise you of is curses are very detrimental do not let them stack um i would i would recommend full clearing every single map to maximize the amount of negative curses you can get. Um, particularly because, like you saw, if you have, I know it's a stretch, but if you have 200 and whatever the heck that was on the uh, one, the last sarcophagus, um, imagine if you had taken all the items all up to that point. You would have like a 99% chance to miss on your attacks, which means you're doing no damage. And if you take any damage, you're going to be hit for a lot more damage you would have been hit for. Um, so I think it's very important to remember to always grab all the negative curses. That's the one big tip I would give to everyone. Um, full clearing maps um, helps you find all the chests, uh, all the secrets, all the stuff like that. Um, so I would recommend doing it. Um, even though it does feel a little bit longer than a Heroes of Hammerwatch full clear per act. Um, the thing is, there's only three acts to Pyramids of Prophecy. So... While you may end up spending more time on each individual act, your overall run time is probably about the same on this one. Um, so yeah, uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, maybe I can answer them down in the comments below or someone else can answer your questions. Um, but I think that's all the information that I have in my brain about Pyramids of Prophecy. So I hope you found it, uh, sorry, I hope you found it helpful. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.